All right, so today we're going to talk about levels of organization. Uh, you should have already made your ecology notebook, uh, deleted the pictures that are on there from mine, and add yours over the next week or so. Um, Mr. Hurley's original right here should link to my document, which your the link to my document is right here. The, the URL is there, so you're going to hyperlink this, and then you're going to add your name and your academic. Then go to slide two. We're going to be using this slideshow. If you want to look at that later, that's this slideshow. Uh, if you're in class, you are uh, sharing with another person in the class, so you can follow directions over here. If you're watching this online, chances are um, you're not at school, and you are going to have to uh, just take notes on your own. But you can open up a Google document, go to File, New, and make a Google document, and then on there, take notes over Levels Organization. And I would name it, I would title the document Levels of Organization Notes, and then put your name and your partner's name if you have a uh, partner to do this. So that's where we're going to start. Tomorrow we'll be hitting the street definitions. That's the, the goal, the street definitions um, for the vocab for this unit. All right, so levels organization. Not to be confused, let's, let's jump down here. I don't want you to get levels of organization confused with levels of classification. So classification is what we did recently where we did domain, kingdom, all the way down to genus and species. That is the levels of classification. We're classifying a specific organism, an animal, a plant, bacteria. Levels of organization is what we've already started doing. If you remember back to last semester, we did, um, we started with organelles, and a bunch of organelles make up a cell, and diff, uh, a bunch of cells, the same cells, make up a tissue, and different types of tissue make up an organ, and different organs make up an organ system, and all the different organ systems make up an organism. And so we ended with organism last nine weeks. And you can see that on the marker board over there. Uh, if you're on video, you can't see that. Uh, but an organism is where we ended last semester, and that's where we're going to start this semester. So we're going to start the smallest thing this semester. is going to be an organism. And we're going to keep zooming out until we get to the outside, like a satellite view of the Earth where everything is really tiny. You can't see any organisms. You can see continents. So organism would be us, bacteria, pine tree, worm, and then we're going to zoom out enough to where we can see the entire Earth, um, and that would be the biosphere. But let's back up here. What are these different organisms? What would you guys, what would you guys say um, this organism is? Is it biotic or abiotic? This is biotic because it's a living thing. It is biotic. Let's do this one. What is this? Biotic or abiotic? It's biotic. What about this stuff in the background? Is this biotic or abiotic? Abiotic because it's not living. What about this green stuff? Biotic because it is living. Uh, I can't tell if that's a rock or a cow, but if that's a rock, that's abiotic. If it's a cow, it's biotic. All right, what about that? Biotic or abiotic? Abiotic. Abiotic because it's non-living. And then this picture... This is abiotic. Um, you could say the person is biotic, but abiotic things are non-living, and biotic things are living. We're going to talk about today. Um, later on in ecology, this picture may may make more sense. This this is called an ovipositor. This is actually like a this, it can deposit its eggs. It's almost like it stings something and deposit its eggs into something. It can also do that same thing to st uh, stun a roach. There's this thing called, you can look it up later, it's called a um, jewel wasp. Really cool, it makes like a zombie slave out of a roach. And its baby eats the insides of the roach before it kills the roach. Really cool, really weird, really good thing that there's not a wasp that does that to humans. Alright, so, level of organization. On your notes, go ahead and write organism. Go ahead and write organism, we're going to start with organism. And if you want to go ahead and write all of them, organism, population, community, ecosystem, biome, biosphere... You can go ahead and do that now. Just pause the video, and you can go ahead and do that now. Write all six of those. And there'll be some other ones added in, but go ahead and write all six of those in your notes. We're going to talk about each one of these, and then I'll pause, and then you can take notes um, on your own. I will try, try not to use the same words that are on here, or just rewrite the notes that are on here. You have access to this if you need to. Try to write it in your own words as much as possible. All right, so organism. An organism is one living thing. And you can think about this as a caribou. It says moose. 
Uh, I don't think this is a moose. I think this is a caribou. It could be a moose. It could be a worm. It could be a bacterium. It could be a uh, fungal, uh, I mean, a fungi. Um, it could be a human. But one living organism, one thing, one living thing is an organism. So we're going to write down what an organism is. As you're doing that, as you're writing down the different these different um, levels, try to keep an example going on. So for this one, it'll be moose, and then we'll go more and more with that example. Try to come up with your own one or two examples of an organism or an individual. All right, so an organism is one individual, one living thing. And you'll also see organism written as an individual. Sometimes it, you can see on this piece of on this picture it says individual. Then we got a population. Now you would think <clears throat> you have some preconceptions, pre like a foreknowledge. No, I'm sorry. You probably came to class thinking a population was one thing, and it's similar to that, but it's going to be a little bit different. The population is what a specific species in a specific area at a specific time. So a population is not just limited to humans. Normally when we're talking about population, especially in social studies and stuff like that, in the news you hear about the population change, um, you're going to be assuming that it's talking about humans and you're assuming that it's talking about right now. But when we're talking about population, I want you to think of three things. A specific species at a specific pl in a specific place at a specific time. So the population is all the members of one species in a particular area. So I could be talking about the population of humans, and in which case you may think the number's in the billions, but I might be talking about spe uh, humans in this room right now, which is going to be different than humans in this room in an hour, or humans in this room next year, which those numbers may be different. So one species, the specific species at a specific location at a specific time. If I were to ask you what the population of this room is, what would you say, or the room you're sitting in, what would you say? Let's say there's 30 of us humans in here. What would you say the population is of this room? You would say 30, but you've not, you should ask me a question. What species are you talking about, Mr. Hurley? So I may be talking about the species that are in that little terrarium over there, the moss that's in there. There's these little caterpillar worm-looking things. There's these little sawdust with legs-looking things. They're really, really, really tiny. There are clover in there. There's moss in there. There's... Um, massive amounts of bacteria, I would expect, in there. All those are populations of this room. If I had a plant sitting on my desk, that would be another population of this room. So when I say what is a population of something, when we're talking about ecology, you need to be you need to make sure you understand what species I'm talking about. So what species in one area at what time? And I would say these are in order of importance. Which species are you talking about? Where and at what time? Most of the time you're going to be assuming right now, but that may not be the case. So population is... The, the number of species in an area at a certain time. I'm sorry, the number of a specific species in an area at a specific time. So an example would be all the caribou in this area. So there's another way of saying it. Groups of individuals or organisms that belong to a species and live in the same area. So many moose or many caribou or many pine trees. I'm going to take notes on what a population is. All right, so we talked about organism, individual. A bunch of those organisms in an area at a specific time is called the population. And then we're going to get something that's going to be different than what you would expect. You might expect this next one, a community. Let's go back. You may expect community to be smaller than a population. So like if we're talking population of Georgia, your community may be your neighborhood or surrounding neighborhoods. That's, it's going to be different. So we're going to have to undo what you understand about that. When it comes to ecology, a community is all the populations of that area. A community is made up of all the populations in that area. So if we look back at the, uh, that picture we've been looking at, so that we have an individual, the individual and its family and all of its similar species, and then we get to the community. A community was going to include all the living things in that area. What is a way that you can explain what a community is made up in one word? In one word, what is a th way that you can explain what the community is made of? It's all the living things, which is what one word says living things? Biotic. Biotic explains all the living things in an area. So your community is made up of all the living things in that area. 
all the living things in the area. Because so a population is one species in one area. A community is all of the species in that area. So the community of this class would include humans. It would include the bacteria that's under your fingernails and in your stomach. It would include the bacteria that's in that terrarium. It would include Gary if he was really alive. It would include the moss and the uh, clover and all the different caterpillars or whatever those things are in that terrarium. It would include all of those things. That would be the community of this classroom. Also, there's fungal spores, there's fungi that are floating in the air right now and you're breathing them in. So those would be part of the community too. There's probably some kind of fungus one of us have on their feet or on their on their knee or on their hip or elbow or nose or something, that is also included in the community. The community of this room is in the billions or trillions. Do you understand? The community of this room, if we were to look up how many individuals are in this room, we're talking trillions of organisms. We're not talking about just 30 students. 30 students is the population of humans. Our community in this class is going to be massive numbers of individuals. Um, so it's made up of all the populations of different species that live in that area and interact in that area. So another way of saying groups of different populations is what a community is. It's more than one population or different groups of species. So you can see here we got a tree, we got a, I don't know, a badger, a bunny rabbit, grass, bushes, caribou, moose, all these things. And we, in a second we'll see birds as well, bacteria, fungi, all of those things are the community. So go ahead and write down what community is. All right, so we've talked about organism, population, and community. Now we're going to jump up to an ecosystem. Remember, community is all the different populations in the area, all the living things in that area. So what could ecosystem be? Anybody have a guess? What could an ecosystem be? If we, we've already talked about living things. And community would involve all the bacteria and fish in the water, all the different things, plants, animals. So what would an ecosystem include that community does not not just dead things. Yes, dead things. Then let's go back to, yeah, what was it? You got all the abiotic things as well. So let's jump forward to ecosystem. Ecosystems, don't write down yet, tilt your screens. Ecosystems are made up of biotic and abiotic factors in an area. So the community was made up of living things. The ecosystem is made up of living and non-living things. So ecosystems are biotic plus the abiotic. It is all the stuff in the community, plus all the non-living things. So if you look at the picture, let's go to the picture that we've been looking at. We've got a community, which has all the living things. Then you start including things like the water, the air, the temperature, the amount of sunlight, the rocks. All those things are abiotic factors. And we depend on abiotic factors to live. You depend on sunlight. You depend on the temperature to be a certain way. You depend on water. You depend on air. All the living, a lot of living things that are around us, we are dependent on. And that ecosystem is the way that it is because of what's in that ecosystem. If our ecosystem changed dr dramatically and we were constantly under a foot of snow year-round or just half the year, a lot of the living things here would not be able to live here anymore. Um, plants, the things that eat those plants, all the way down the food chain, food web, um, they, would all, they would all change. All right, so ecosystem is all the living things and non-living things. Go ahead and write that down. All right, we've gotten all the way down to ecosystem. Let's go to biome. Oh, before we do that, let's look at this ecosystem. I forgot. Um, so these, this is a picture. Which of these pictures have an ecosystem labeled on it? Not labeled. The bottom one, definitely. So let's look at this. So these birds, this bird would be what level? An organism. All the birds that are of the same species, which I don't know if they are, but if they're all the same species, what would that be? The population, that would be one species in one area right here in this picture. Then you got this um, crocodile or alligator. What would now, if I involve this bird and this uh, alligator and all the other living things, what would that be? What level? A community. So we went from organism to population, which is all the birds, to community, which is all the living things, including this grass or bamboo or whatever, the bushes, the trees, the bacteria and the fish in the water, um, the crabs and everything that's in this picture, all of those would be the community. And then if we step further out 
even more, what else do we start including? Non-living things. We start including the non-living things, like the water itself, the air, how much sunlight is there, the temperature, all the non-living things in that area. So why isn't this an ecosystem? There are abiotic things there, but ecosystems involve abiotic things. This is actually another ecosystem, y'all. This is a compost pile, and in this compost pile, there are trillions and trillions and trillions and trillions and trillions of bacteria and um, other organisms in this pile. There are more organisms in a spoonful of really good soil, a really good compost. Think about the big spoons that you would have at your house like that. You would eat cereal with a bigger spoon, a tablespoon. In a tablespoon of good composted soil, there are more organisms in that than there are humans on Earth. Think about that. There are more organisms in a spoonful of really rich soil than there are humans on Earth. There are massive amounts of organisms in this pile. And you can see steams coming up. So there's organisms, and then there's other abiotic factors like steam, um, like the nitrogen in here, like the carbon that's in here, like the oxygen that's in there, how much sunlight is getting on it. This is its own ecosystem right here. What about this? Is they, not, not this one, but a human's body is also an ecosystem. You've got the human and all of their cells and tissues that, are, that make them up. Then you've also got bacteria that are in there, different types of bacteria. Um, there's actually bacteria that live on your skin that, when, and I just learned about this yesterday, um, I'm, you can check me on this, but the bacteria that's on skin is actually eating some of the bacteria. That's actually eating oil that your, oil, that your body secretes out. The bacteria are eating that oil, and one of the byproducts, and when I say that, I think poop, of the bacteria, the, the excrement of that bacteria actually covers your skin and protects you from harmful bacteria. So you're feeding this b good bacteria and it's got like a shield or a guard made of its own poop, which is it's not actually poop, it doesn't look like poop, but essentially what it is is waste product um, that's actually covering your skin and protecting you, further protecting you from harmful bacteria. It's just weird. So yes, we are our own ecosystem. We have no, we aren't our. We are an ecosystem. We have living parts of us, living things that live in us and on us, and we also have non-living things like water, like oxygen, things like that. So that's ecosystem. All right, biome. We're going to spend an entire unit on this. There's a unit that is called biomes, and it's part of ecology, but it's, it'll have its own tests and stuff like that. A biome is, a, and you can go and type this out, a biome is a group of ecosystems that have the same climate and similar dominant communities. And we'll talk about that. what that is. Um, a dominant community, if you think about Africa, think about some of the animals that are out there. There's typically large carnivores, and then there's typically large groups of herbivores. If you think about the mid-United States, without humans here, there would be massive amounts of large herbivores. Y'all know what herbivores are that are in the mid-United States or used to be? Massive. They're like the size of cows. Dinosaurs? Not dinosaurs. I mean, just recently, the last few hundred years. Bison. Buffalo. So these buffalo used to roam the countryside in massive numbers. We're talking ma like tens of thousands of buffalo in, in herds would um, go around, and then there would be wolves that eat them. You have a large predator, like a, a wolf. Whereas in Africa, you would have maybe antelope or um, wildebeests, and the predator that's around them are going to be things like lions. Um, so you have, it's the same, it's a similar biome, but it's in two different locations. A lion is probably not going to do super well in our grassland, the United States grasslands, and a wolf it's probably not going to do very well in the um, grasslands of Africa. And we'll talk more about that when it comes, but I just want you to understand that uh, think about lion, uh, think about alligators and crocodiles. Very similar habitat, very similar um, community, and very similar ecosystem. And those things together, all the ecosystems that have the similar climate and similar dom uh, dominant communities, that is called a biome. It's called a biome. So go ahead and write down what a biome is. All right, so another example would be United States where we live in the U.S. We have hardwood trees and we have softwood trees. We have, a, it's predominantly, think about pine trees. We have a lot of pine trees and then we have a lot of other types of trees that are hardwoods. You're, if you go to Europe, you're going to see very similar climate. Now, there, it may be, there's going to be some differences, but in general, you're going to have very similar animals. You're going to have deer. You're going to have woodpeckers. You're going to have some kind of buzzard. You're going to have some kind of 
Um, think about prairie dogs and stuff like that. Uh, that. That's for Africa, I'm sorry. But you're going to have similar dominant communities in one place versus the other. And it may be a different type of bear that's there and here, but it's still going to be a bear. It's going to have a very similar dominant communities in a biome. And again, we'll talk about that. There are some examples of biomes at the bottom, but we'll talk about that. Then we get to the biosphere. We've zoomed out all the way the biosphere. The biosphere is where every living thing on Earth is contained. So the biosphere goes up as high as the organisms can go, which I guess now would include the International Space Station. I'm not sure you can, I'm not sure if we include that. Um, but it's going up miles and it's going down miles. Do worms and stuff that's in the ground, do they go down miles into the earth? What goes down miles below the surface of the earth? Think about Mariana Trench. Y'all know what the Mariana Trench is? It's a trench in the ocean that organisms live deep, deep down these thermal vents in the ocean. So the biosphere goes up extremely high and extremely low. It's where every, it's the sphere of Earth. Look at this, these prefixes and suffixes. The sphere of Earth of life. The life circle. The life sphere. It's the part of Earth. You remember, I don't know if you guys remember last year talking about the ionosphere and the troposphere and the stratosphere and all those different layers of, or, uh, of the atmosphere. The biosphere is the biology version of that because it's the area where living things are. And so you can see we've kind of finished out this. The biosphere is all the planet where life exists. It includes the land, the water, the air, every living thing. It extends up, this one um, says, it extends up 8 kilometers and down 11 kilometers below the surface and above the surface of the earth. Massive area. That's including everything, living and non-living. So you should have a better understanding of what the organism, all of the levels of organization from organism all the way down to biosphere. These three here is what we're going to focus on for a while and in getting into ecosystem. And then the next unit we'll talk about the biomes. So organism, all the organisms in an area is its population. All the organisms of one species in an area is a population. All the populations in the area is a community. That's all the living things. And the ecosystem is the community, all the living things, plus all the non-living things. That's what we're going to focus on for the next um, several weeks.